This video was made possible by the EA Creator Network. Controller and camera settings. A staple video in previous Fevers and aka EAFC. Simply because settings change every year. And this is a breakdown of the best EAFC 25 camera and controller settings. Now of course we are going to have the preset to competitive simply because this is what you are forced to use in any competitive mode. Shot assistance is on assisted. This is simply because if you do not have this to assisted it will end up being like a power up shot where you are shooting and it completely misses the goal and that's because there is no assistance to the left stick aiming. So assisted for shot assistance. Time finishing. There's a complete tutorial to this coming to the channel in the next few days but this is to be left to on because it does enhance your ability to convert shots to goals. Moving to through pass assistance, this is on semi because manual yet again is very manual and it's very touchy to the left stick and your aiming needs to be very precise in the moment. But with semi, it lots on to the attacker that you desire. We then have lob through pass again. This is to be left on semi. Yet again, the same situation. Ground pass assistance, assisted. Cross assistance, assisted. Lob pass assistance, assisted. Vice versa, the same as shot assistance. You need these all to be assisted, otherwise your shots, crosses, and passes will go way well. Pass receiver lock is to be left on late. And this is simply because if you pass, but you need to adjust the left stick aiming towards a play that you desire you cannot do this if it's to be left on animation start or power up no 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 you want to have this on late so that you can adjust the last second if you need to pass somewhere else precision pass sensitivity is to be left on normal okay yet again very similar to pass receiver lock it is very responsive when you have this set to high meaning if you do slightly miss aim it's gonna aim towards a player that you do not desire whereas when it's left on normal you're going to have a more assisted pass in the execution moving on to defending clearance assisted is directional that's because if you do not have this on directional and it's on classic what happens when you press the clear button is it will just clear it to wherever it thinks not where you're pointing with the left stick so this is on directional in terms of jockeying and defending Advanced defending is my recommendation. Of course, with tactical defending, we don't have the implementation of the seal out, which is one of the most overpowered defending techniques and strategies you could use in FC24. But with FC25, it's back. You can shoulder off players, and it does lock on. So you need to use advanced defending this year, in my opinion. Again, when you're going in for a tackle, press the X button to lock on. And as you lock on, press the circle button to complete the tackle. Pass block assistance is on. That's so that you can have your AI defenders intercept if need be. You're not always going to have the best ability to switch or you may not switch in time with the right stick and that's where pass block assistance is going to help with that. Auto switching on manual. And this is simply because if the ball's in the air and you have it on air balls only, what happens is unfortunately it will switch off the defender that you have when you haven't actually activated it too. Meaning sometimes it may switch off the desired defender that you already had in the moment, which you do not want. So we're going to leave this to manual. In terms of auto switching move assistance, it is on none. That's so that we don't have any auto switching in the move itself. Right stick switching on classic. I've spoken about this many times. We have player rotation, adaptive and classic. You want your right stick to flick towards the play that you desire instantly and that's because for us to press sufficiently and switch very quickly we need it to be instant and that's where your practice comes in to getting the angles correct in the first place and not having this set to play rotation or adaptive where you can adapt sure but it's a lot slower and you can't press up high very quick when it's on adaptive so you need to have this on classic so that you can get quick at switching and that comes down to your accuracy and angles so get your accuracy down pat and you won't need to use these other two settings in terms of right stick switching reference this is on player relative i've spoken about this in previous years it's very important because you cannot select players that are, are far away from the ball if it's left on ball relative you can only select the players around the ball if it's on ball relative and you don't want that you want the ability to switch to your wing back if you need to to obviously track the winger you want to have the ability to switch to anyone you want on the pitch without having to rely on where the ball is so play relative is the setting for this in terms of sensitivity this is 
up to you, but in my opinion, in my recommendation, leave this on 7 to 8, and that's because if it's on a low sensitivity, it may take quite some time to flick to the play that you desire, again, defeating the purpose of having classic Right, sit switching. Closest to the ball for Nets player indicator. There are a few new settings to this this time. Goal, side, classic, as well as closest to the ball. I've chosen, however, closest to the ball because you can use that as a pinpoint and you'll at least know who you're selecting at that time. There will be a dull arrow as well above the defender that you desire. So keep an eye on that. And of course, L1 will be able to switch to that player. Reaction time modifier. This is on off. And this is so it will instantly switch to the player that you desire with L1 one rather than a delay in so and the AI is implemented when it's set to on you don't want that you want as much control in your defense and your defenders as possible when it comes to switching so this is to be left off player lock is on on a very key attacking strategy in your attacking arsenal it's very good for dragging attackers into space to create tapping opportunities or away from defenders so leave this to on and get practicing with player lock in terms of dribbling context dribbling is off and that's because we are on the competitive mode save assistance is on assisted now this is actually left to semi in your default settings. You want this to be assisted because otherwise it's gonna rely on you to move the keeper a lot of the time and sometimes you won't have the ability to. So assisted is best for this. Controller reference, analog sprint, off. Trigger effect, off. And user vibration feedback is to be left to off. And that's simply so you have a lot more control over the sprint when you are sprinting in the AFC 25. If you do have NLOD sprint on on, unfortunately, you won't be able to burst instantly into the space when you need to because it will take into consideration how much pressure you're putting onto the right stick onto R2 and you may not always have the most pressure when you do want the most pressure to burst into the space. If you're wanting to have a slower sprint, use R1 dribbling because that'll be the alternative. Trigger effect and user vibration feedback need to be off because you don't want to have the adverse effect of triggers getting stuck. With trigger effect, it actually takes longer for you to sprint away because it becomes harder. There's an AI feature in the controller and you don't want that. Now, in terms of camera settings, I've always said this. Camera settings that allow you to see the majority of the pitch, but also allow you to see the intricate touches of your attackers when dribbling is very important. And Classic for me does that. And that's why Classic, Classic, Classic for all three camera settings with a custom setting of 20 height and zero zoom is the most effective and versatile camera angle for me in EAFC 25. And you can then have ball tracking speed a bit higher to six. And that allows you to be closer up and it will also pan quite quickly when the ball does maneuver on the pitch so it's classic 20 zero for the camera setting today for me now i am coaching one-on-one -on -one. if you want to be a part of the coaching academy the link to that is down below and of course there are plenty more tutorials coming to the channel on the afc 25 so subscribe and if you like this video you may just enjoy this one here. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, then I'd really appreciate it if you hit the subscribe button. And lastly, if you do want any pre-gaming fuel or supplement, then head over to atpscience.com, which is the first link in the description, and use the code DILLANETSATP at checkout to get yourself a discount. Not only is it the cheapest way to get supplements, but it helps me out a ton, guys. So, thank you.